What's up everyone? Welcome back to the garage. Today I have a very interesting welder for us to take a look at. It is actually in this case, so it is not your traditional box with a handle on the top. It actually fits inside this plastic case. And this is the Fitten Hot Handheld Stick Welder. They sent this to me, asked if I wanted to get one for review. I told them as long as my review can be unbiased, I would absolutely review one for them. So here we go. So the first thing you're going to notice with this is that it looks like an oversized hair dryer and there's really not much to it. On the bottom here you've got a standard connector where your ground clamp would hook up to and then up on the front here you've got a standard connector inside and they, it also comes with this adapter that fits that connector. Now the adapter allows you to use this welding rod right out of here and you would weld like this. But you can also put an electrode holder on here and use it like a traditional stick welder and they include that in the box. So I haven't used this thing yet. I've taken some of the things out of the box just to make the video go a little quicker. And one of the things that they include is an electrode holder with a pretty decent length cord. They also include your ground clamp which has maybe a three foot cord. I really wish this was a little bit longer, but since this is a standard connector down here, you can grab one off a different machine or replace it with one that is slightly longer. Now this does come with a few other things. It comes with some very basic safety equipment. It came with one of those handheld welding masks and a thin pair of gloves. I took those out already and my welding mask was broken anyways because they packed it in here on top and then closed the lid. Don't let that be a determining factor in whether you purchase this or not. Those are just real cheap things to get you by and it's always better to buy proper welding equipment. So this is a 120 amp machine and it's very basic. It's got an on off switch here. You've got a display that's going to show your amperage and then you've got two LED indicator lights for standby as well as an overheat. And then this dial here on the grip is what changes your amperage. And on the front here you'll notice there's some USB ports actually. And when I first saw this I thought that was kind of gimmicky. But I guess if you really wanted to you could hook up some lights or something like that and get them closer to where you're welding if you decided that would be help. The duty cycle on this is 25%. That means you'll be able to weld for about two and a half minutes out of a 10 minute period. And this is about 43 amps input, 43.6 amp input. So you will need a decent sized breaker as this is a 110 only machine. So keep that in mind if you're looking to purchase one of these. That being said, let me get this thing plugged in and I've got a plate here and we will get into some welds and see how it does. I think welding handheld is gonna be very interesting and we'll have to see how that goes. All right, so here we are. We're gonna put in this electrode holder and do that first. Very simple, just goes in the end, twists and locks in. And your ground clamp is going to go in the same way but on the bottom of the handle here. Alright, so here we go. 6013 rod, 330 seconds diameter at about 84 amps. We'll see how she does. Alright, so we'll give these a couple minutes to cool. I did have a little issue at first. These rods are a little bit old at this point, so I don't know if that had something to do with it, or it could just be my skill as a stick welder. We're going to let them cool off, and I'll get these cleaned up, and we'll take a look at them. So as you can see, those welds did turn out pretty good, aside from my poor technique, maybe, in a couple areas. But overall, I mean, if, if you can stick weld, then this thing will stick weld. There's no question about that. So I'm going to get it switched over to the style where you hold it, like a blow dryer and we're gonna give that a go and that should be pretty interesting. So what they give you is this and this has the same keyway in it that the connector for the electrode holder does and it just twists in and in the center there's a hole and it's got this knob that locks your welding rod in. So you just lock that in like that and put your thumb screw in and this is what's gonna hold your electrode in. It's just gonna pinch it in there and make sure it's getting good contact. So. Let me grab another rod here. I'm going to use the same sample piece or scrap piece just flipped over. And I'm going to use it as the gun style, handheld style on this side. And we'll take a look at that. Like I said, we already know that it welds. So this is going to be basically just showing how bad I am at welding with this thing handheld. 
I'm sure if you practiced enough, you could get decent looking welds. And there may even be some situations where having this and being able to support it with two hands up in a tight corner or something, or if you needed to weld up on like a ladder or something, maybe you could get in there. But overall, I think it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty wonky. All right, so I think that's about all I'm gonna do with that. I, it works, it's just kind of awkward. It's something you definitely would have to get used to. Standing up using this thing, I wanted to stand and use it because otherwise I'd be holding this machine next to my head and you're not gonna weld like that, really. So standing up gets you far away from your metal and it makes it very difficult to see exactly what the end of that rod's doing. Uh, that's something that would probably go away with some practice and just getting an overall feel for it, especially if you're a beginner welder. And the other thing that, there's two things that I'd like to see on this machine if you were to use it handheld. If you put the electro holder on it, it works fine. There's no issues with using this as a regular traditional stick welder with an electrode holder. It works perfectly fine. If you plan on using this handheld, there's two things you need to keep in mind. Number one is that this dial, if you're holding it up here, it's going to get hit by your thumb more than likely. I'd like to see that put somewhere else that's not the grip. So maybe up here next to the display, on the back, on the top, just somewhere that's not going to get hit by your hand while you're using it. If you, This is very sensitive, so if you do bump it, you can drastically change the amperage. It's not just you're going to go up an amp or two if you bump this knob. You're going to go up 10, 20, 30 amps or maybe even max out the machine. We'll take a look at it here again so you can see how much it actually changes. So right now it is at 59 amps and just the slightest bump is going to make it... And it actually, if you hit it, it'll keep going. So the slightest bump is going to change this amperage setting drastically. That's my first gripe with that, and to me, that's a pretty major one. Having this where your thumb can hit it can cause all sorts of problems. You're either going to be not even striking the rod or not being hot enough, so that really can become a safety thing in your finished product, especially if you don't know how to look at a weld and determine whether it was too hot, too cold. The second thing I'd like to see is some sort of trigger mechanism in here. Looking at this now, there's no trigger. It's just on when you hold this power button down and the fan comes on. If you're using it with the electrode holder and have this laying somewhere, that's fine because we all know how to use an electrode holder. You know, I pop the electrode out, hang it on something, you know, keep it away from the ground and just make sure that this doesn't ground out. With this, especially if you have a welding rod in it and it, it's not necessarily easily removable because you've got to mess with this thumb screw then pull it out and you've still got exposed metal at the tip here if you do that you can't really lay this down while it's on so I'd like to see a switch that actually would turn it on and off that way when you're welding you can hold the trigger down and be welding and when you let go it's off and you can safely set this machine down in order for that to happen you would definitely either have to have a lockable trigger so that you could still use your electrode holder or some kind of mode selection within the electronics that either activated or deactivated that switch. But I feel like that would be an important safety measure in order to make this suitable for most people, especially beginner welders. Another thing that's kind of a minor annoyance is this thumb, this thumb screw setup just takes longer than an electrode holder. All you have to do with this is give it a slight squeeze, your electrode's gonna fall out. You squeeze it, slap your new one in there, and you're good to go back to welding. With this, you've gotta unscrew this a few turns, slide it out, not a huge deal, put a new electrode in, make sure it's seated all the way, past this thumb screw, and then tighten everything back down. 
So there's a little bit more to it with this and I could see if you're doing a lot of welds that can get pretty old. Doing a quick weld here and there, not necessarily a big deal. I'm gonna put a link to this in the description below so if this interests you or you just wanna check it out and see what it's all about, it's definitely worth going and looking at the Amazon page for it. There's a lot of information there that's decently written and you can take a look at this thing for yourself. As of filming, it is $169.99 with an additional $50 off at checkout in the little checkbox coupons. So if you're interested in it, check it out. This would be a good welder for somebody who very rarely welds but wants the capability. Because it comes with the case and everything fits nicely in the case, it's going to keep dust and dirt off of it. You can safely put it under a workbench or on a shelf, even like under the back seat of your truck or something if you need something portable in a pinch. Or if you camp and may need to do some repairs on your camper or something like that, this is a great option to stick in you know, a compartment or storage area and forget about it until you need it. So take a look, let me know what you think in the comments down below, and we will see you next time.